right? So then number three, she talks about the, the word conscious, right? Conscious, you know, the word conscious also is the word being present, right? And that's one of the things that takes our power, you know, in a sense, it, well, it, it, it gives more, it, it, it's, it's a place of being present, right? It probably talks more about the focus, right? Because if you're not present, you cannot be focused, right? You, if you're not present, if you're not present, then your unconsciousness is the one that is bearing rule, right? So whatsoever it is that it's stored up there, right, is what is bearing rule, right? Whatsoever it's stored up there, if you did not store anything intentionally positive there, the negative will take control, right? So if you're not intentional, if you're not conscious, right, if you're not present in the moment, what you're still going to believe in and what's going to believe in is whatever is your subconsciousness, right? That's the same thing we talk about, right? Uh, you set out to go somewhere, but while you're going, your mind is off the road. You're thinking about something else, but somehow you find yourself where you were going. <clears throat> that is because while you were not conscious of the journey, your subconsciousness was consciously taking you. Right, you were driving, knowing what was going on, but it wasn't your consciousness that was taking you. It was your unconsciousness, which is a store of the fact that you have been there before. So whatever storage inside your unconsciousness took over when you were not conscious of the journey. Right, the challenge is as a function of whatever it is that you've stored there. If you've stored positive there, you will get positive. If you've stored negatively, your unconsciousness that what you will get. If you have not done any recent work to do a house cleaning of your unconsciousness, it will be the stories of life that you've told yourself, right? Whether it's your upbringing, your family, your society, some incident in your life, you know, whatever interpretation you give to that story, right? That is what you're going to believe in at that point in time when you're not conscious. So when you're intentional, you're conscious. When you're conscious, you override your subconsciousness, right? When you're conscious, you are in control. When you're not conscious, your unconsciousness is in control, right? So it's up to you to decide what you want to leave in the moment, right? So the intentional it takes you to be to use your conscious, your conscious mind, right, which involves your willpower, right? You thinking and looking at the facts at hand, right? So, so it's conscious planning of steps needed to get there. So you're, you're, you're consciously planning what it takes to get there. You know, and like I said, that's what was missing in the meeting yesterday. I mean, these guys are just talking from their emotions, right? It's a shame that adults would not look at facts, you know, and it's a shame. Anyways, uh, conscious planning of steps needed to get there. How will you accomplish your goals? Gather your thoughts before you begin on walking towards the goal. Yes, you may need to revise as you go, but you can only know correction, modifications, if you have taught the journey true. You know, just to re react re what some of the things we spoke along that last week is the fact that, you know, when we plan, it's not because we think that everything will happen the way we planned it. No, no, no. You know, there's that popular, popular quote by the Prussian, uh, 17th century Prussian uh, general, you know, and also quoted by uh, Desert, Desert, Desert Fox, who is the Feed Marshal, Java Feed Marshal. Uh, you know, we, the first thing that will happen when your plan hits reality is that it will find out that it needs to change, right? But it is better for you to have a plan than for you not to have a plan, right? When you have a plan and you're planned, when you, when you hit reality, it's easier to modify a plan you have than to just start planning at the time reality hits you. That is the difference. I mean, reality will never match one-to-one -one your planning scenario. That is okay. But some people don't plan just because of that. That's foolishness, right? Because it's better to have a plan you can adjust than to start planning just when reality hits. Right, you're gonna lose a lot. You you're not gonna plan well because if you do that, you you get into what we call a tunnel vision, right? When you are in crisis, 
right? And you're trying to plan in crisis, your brain locks up to whatsoever it hits first. We'll call it tonal vision. You begin then justifying that part that your brain has hit because of the, the environment, the fear, the, 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 the danger, right? We'll call it tonal vision. Whatever tunnel that your brain hits might not be the right part, right? Might just be doing all the stupid things because your brain will justify it because of the panic situation around. And that's why a lot of people die more from fear than the actual incident when there's a crisis, right? It's just like we had when the Twin Towers, right, were eaten by those planes. You had people jumping from windows. You know, why would people jump from windows? Because they did not have an emergency plan in their head. So their brain just said, all right, better to jump out of the window. You know, they just jumped to their death, right? They could have looked for some way, right? If they had had in, uh, what we call um, scenario planning, right, which is part of what we do, part of the emergency management plan. You, 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 we call them drills, right? You, you do scenario planning. If this happens, what will we do? If that happens, what will we do? When you have that, that your mental model, it's easier to key into that mental model, which is a plan, right? Then you start planning just when um, the, the crisis hits, because it's called tunnel vision, right? You, you, once you get into that tunnel, you, you don't look at facts anymore, right? It's like people that, that go into arguments, right? They don't look at facts. It's all about win, win, win. You know, at that point in time, you're trying to win with yourself, right? But then you might just be locked in into the wrong rule and you begin to make one mistake on top of the other, right? <laughs> it doesn't get you into safety, right? But when you plan, you do scenario planning, you do scenario planning, right? You have mental models of what I might do. If this happens, what do I do? If that happens, what do I do? It's easier to make adjustment to that mental model than just planning when crisis hits you, right? That is the power of having a plan, right? And that's what Bethany is, is saying here in number three, you know, being conscious, your consciousness, right it's planning look at all the issues and looking at what what was the best part you know and that is best done before crisis hits before reality hits right again we'll talk about that when we talk about money right we'll say the best time to have a budget right is before the money comes once the money hits you right <laughs> You know, the spirit of money is taking over you at that point in time, right? When the spirit of money takes over you, you cannot have a good plan. You're going to have to come into a tunnel vision also, right? Because the spirit of money has, has hit you. The best time to plan for money is before that money hits your hand, right? That is what budget is. Budget is not what you do after the money has hit your hand, right? Right, well, you can call that budget, but that you don't have the fullness of the power of budgeting. Rather, right? fullness of the power of budgeting comes when you don't have the emotion of the money. You're expecting money plan to a plan for it, right? When you don't have it in your hands yet, so that as soon as you have it in your hand, you begin to execute your plan. Yes, you might make one or two adjustments to your plan, but at least you have something to adjust. But if you don't have a plan at all. <laughs> That well, you almost I can almost assure you you're not gonna spend that money well, right? Because you've been making emotional decisions, right? Money has emotions, money is a spirit, right? So if you the way we control the spirit and the emotion of money is having a budget, and that budget is best done before the money comes into your hands, right? So another reason why we need to be conscious, right, in intentionality right it, it's about planning right and lastly you know number four you know Max talks about root, rootlessness right she says rootlessness about the use of time needed to accomplish the goals use your time wisely it's precious right it's just being rootless uh, or being serious about the use of time right uh time is the most precious resource right it's okay to lose money well, you can get the money back. I can tell you that for sure. Uh, you know, I've been too depressed. I've lost a lot of money, you know, but I made them more back. But making money is not a problem. What you don't get is a life. You can get a life back, right? You can get a life back. 
if you miss your your childhood, you can never get it back, right? Michael Jackson tried to do it, would never learn and all of that. But, but the way life is, you can't get it back, right? So it's better to take risk than to live in regret, right? If there's something you're hard to do, go ahead and do it, right? Just do your planning, do your checks, uh, make sure that it's legal, it's moral, right? And if that's what your heart is set on doing, it's better to, to do it and know that I did it and failed or rather live all your life saying, what would have happened if I did it, you know? Right. That's also going about what we did last week. Wow, that's taking more than half of the time we have to 